Hey everyone and welcome to Market Psychology 101 where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's greed. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the stock market, some of the indicators to see where we are at, how the market's doing, as well as taking a look at the Magnificent 7 stocks. So starting off Let's take a look at fear and greed, and we have gone up from extreme fear into fear. So the market is having a little bit of a rebound, according to this indicator as well on Pi Vesting. You can see it is going up there as well. Every week, I also do videos on crypto and on crypto fear and greed. We have been in this downtrend and overall crypto looking pretty weak at the moment. Again, subscribe if you want to see any crypto videos but today we're going to be taking a look at stocks so starting off with the s p 500 you can see that we did have this downtrend and when we do one of the indicators i like to look at is the stochastic rsi and on the longer time frames i'm waiting for this to eventually flip up and show that we are starting to move in a positive direction again. Now you can see the orange line is still over the blue, but the blue is looking like it's bottoming and possibly getting ready to go back up. So we'll see. We have this trend line that's hit a couple key points since this little peak here in August of 22 and have touched it a couple times. So we'll see if this is just coming up to this trend line before going back down to maybe the 50 week moving average um, or otherwise breaking back up. And if the S&P 500 was to have a durable move back up, I'd be targeting some of these areas around the low 6,000s. But we'll see whether this is getting ready to roll over or it's just stochastic is showing possibly, possibly getting ready to go up. But you can see when it did last, do a similar move like this where uh, it did a fake out you can see the blue got above the orange and then went back down so um, yeah we're, we're gonna have either something like this or a bigger move up so we'll wait and see on that on the VIX you can see the VIX is rolling over and the VIX measures the volatility of the market so if the VIX is rolling over that means that volatility is decreasing and it's spiked to the third highest level since the great financial crisis. So the VIX has not been at a level this high or higher since COVID sell-off and the GFC in uh, 2008. So VIX coming back down to some of those supports. Um, but as you can see with the stochastic, still bottoming there a little bit. One thing I like to look at is the VIX divided by the VVIX. It's the volatility of the markets divided by the volatility of the VIX. And do I think this is a an amazing time to buy and get great discounts? Well, not so much. Yes, we had the spike, but you can see we're still in this range right here where prices overall for the market are still relatively high, even though it's very much weighted in the mag seven, mag 7 stocks. That's why we talk about those so much. Really not Tesla, but when we get up to points like this, those tend to be better values. So overall, VIX divided by VIX level is still down here. Uh, let's take a look at the US 10 year, two year. So right as it wicked above the zero line, typically when the yield curve uninverts, there's about a year to two years before the market bottoms. Now, is this the true on inversion? Well, technically, it wicked above it, but I'm still waiting for a close above there. Now, we have this doji on the weekly. And what you guys may or may not know about doji candles is that signals there's indecisiveness. So what's kind of funny here, you know, I, I like having on my moving averages. This is a 200, the dark blue, the light blue is the 100, the orange is the 50. And what's curious is how we got to the 200 and the zero line and immediately are having a little bit of possible rejection off that. So it is possible the yields come down just a little before uh, continuously going back up. So just something to keep an eye on when we are ripping above that zero line, which it's it's probably going to go. This is probably going to happen somewhere within a month or so of the Fed cutting rates. Um, that's when you have to start the timer and really keep an eye on things. Unemployment still durably going up as well. Let's take a quick look at the Dow and the Dow. Do we notice anything here? 
Uh, well, yeah, just right in that 20 week moving average. Maybe we could take a look at the daily. Uh, came down to the 100 day moving average, which you can see the Dow likes a lot when it's at deeper value. Yes, it has gotten under before, um, but it's had a good bounce up. So probably encountering some resistance in these areas. A uh, quick look at Bitcoin before going into the Meg 7 stocks. This circle I have drawn here, that's a 30% correction. And Bitcoin, as you can see, it tried the hold above the 200 moving average, got rejected off the 50-day moving average. We're in the daily time frame. Had one, two, three dojis, and all of a sudden just a decent red candle down. So holding on to the 200-day moving average by a thread if it gets to the bottom of this channel. An area to look for deep value in Bitcoin is this 54.5 level. You can see even though it had that big sell-off and got to that that line here, that's the 786 Fib. Uh, if I zoom way out, draw Fibonacci uh, retracement from the high to the low macro-wise, got down to the Fib, also the 50-week moving average. So if it came down to the bottom of this uh, channel again, I wouldn't be surprised. But if it starts closing underneath, watch out. We could see Bitcoin possibly breaking under that fib and getting even as low as 44 45k there's price action support back here as well as the 100 week moving average and that would be again if we're having weekly candles closing underneath this channel and then you should watch out all right let's get into mag 7 stocks you guys aren't here for crypto you're here for for mag 7 stocks so on nvidia you notice that the stochastic rsi is starting to flip up we could put on a buy signal and it'd probably show that we're getting a buy on the weekly as well uh let's go over to the daily the daily is showing a little bit overbought so it's probably on the daily you know the, the stochastic rsi is showing us or reflecting that we're probably going to have some bit of a barrier here at this uh at this 236, we drew a FIB retracement from the low to the high. And after it corrected, it came down to the 618. So NVIDIA came down on the daily to the 618 of that FIB retracement. It's got up to the 236. There might be a minor rejection here, maybe down to this 110 level before continuing up higher, somewhere around the 139, 140 level. So if NVIDIA is able to stay bullish, that's what I would target. <laughs> Sorry about the dog here. Neighbor's dog's rallying her up. Uh, if it's going to turn over uh, and go lower than, than it has before, I'd say you'd have to watch for this 200-day moving average as well as uh, this line right here. That's the 786 um, around the high 80s, mid to high 80s level. So just something uh, to keep in mind in both uh, bullish and bearish scenarios. But it does look like a little bit of resistance here. So 50-day uh, moving averages there as well. Again, bullish. I'd watch for maybe a little bit of a pullback somewhere around here, the low uh, 110s, and then boom. Uh, otherwise, if it's going down closer to here. Let's move on to Microsoft. And Microsoft, you can see on the daily as well, uh, moving up there. Actually, let's do this. Let's go from weekly to daily. Let's do the same thing we did with NVIDIA. This one's looking like it's getting ready to flip positive on the stochastic as well. And you can see Microsoft. You remember what that candle is. It's called a doji, and it's undecided. So uh, should it start to continuously get above that stochastic, then we can see it move similar to NVIDIA. Let's go to, first of all, I want to see how the FIB's looking here. All right, let's go to the daily. And on the daily, you can see we're encountering some key resistance here. We have the 50, the 100, the 236 FIB. Probably going to be some level of resistance here as well as stochastic is hitting the higher level. So it, it is possible here that we get a decent amount of rejection before going down a little bit and then continuing back up uh, if it continues to stay bullish. Uh, but if it's rejected again and we go down further, the next area for Microsoft to watch would be 381 if if we are going to get rejected pretty good here. But looked like we had a good bounce, good support off the 382 and the 200 day. Uh, so, you know, it's possible we could even just range bound in here but just want to give you guys some levels to look for i would imagine there's going to be a decent level of resistance here at 426 um and then you know 
deeper value areas of 400 and 381, 382. Let's go over to Apple. And Apple as well turning green on the weekly, just like NVIDIA. And Apple is getting above that 236. So maybe Apple's getting ready to challenge its former all-time high. Stochastic, though, it's shown it's going down a little bit. Let's zoom in on this guy, uh, see what we got. So on the daily, you can see it's still elevated as well. Um, you can see right now where I'm looking where that peak is. Um, this is kind of an important level for Apple. If it isn't really able to fully get above this line here, then technically, technically you could say this is a lower high and you might have to worry more about the downside, but it is looking like it's uh, wanting to get above this uh, area here. And maybe it has, let's zoom in a little bit actually. Let's take a look. Yeah, on there, on there I would, okay, maybe not quite. So not quite, you can see, it's kind of funny how that works. Almost got up there and then instant rejection. So, um, but it does like, we're way zoomed in here. We're on the five minute and it is like in the hundred average on the five minutes. So maybe it's gonna bounce and get above there. Uh, but something to watch for Apple, kind of key level here on the daily. Uh, but it, if it's able to get through, I think we're gonna be challenging the former all time highs again at around 236, possibly going higher. Uh, if not, and then you have to take a look at these areas. To, on the daily, the 50, as well as the 236 Feb, uh, some area between 214 and 217. And, you know, would I be looking at buying Apple right now? Me personally, I would not. A couple things I look for, uh, speaking of the stochastic, which I just removed, I want to see that flip positive on the weekly. Sorry, let me put that back on. I got ahead of myself. I want to see this flip positive. So blue getting above the orange. And I also want to see um, on the weekly a buy signal as well. I was gonna put that on for you guys. So we have the leading indicator, the 1020 MA crossover, or we have the lagging indicator. This one I think is better for if we're in a big bear market going down. So you get confirmation, not fake outs. Uh, but still technically we are above the 50 week moving average. So we're still bullish in my opinion. Uh, so I would put on a leading indicator, you could see stochastic like i showed you before it hasn't totally gone up uh, but this this indicator buy sell signal is saying you know what on the weekly we're, we're looking at possibly going up and most times you know this is why i use heikinashi signals in this indicator most times it, it's good at cutting out the noise and we'll be green or red consistently so if we're able to stay green i would i would usually expect it to durably move up for a bit but as you can see that's not always the case so do know indicators aren't everything we're trying to reduce risk but there is no 100 percent guarantee even with indicators you're just trying to reduce risk and get better value let's go over to amazon so a lot of these doji candles man amazon weekly it, the weekly chart looks really clean and nice you can see came down through this 786 fib. So this macro fib, it's the opposite. It, instead of drawing from, <coughs> excuse me, the low to the high, we drew from the prior high to low. And after it got a new all time high, it wasn't able to close above there um, with, with its complete candle body and wick for more than one week. So immediately started coming down and came right down to the 786 as well as the 100 week moving average. Uh, but came back up pretty good. And now, you know, it's waiting to see, okay, you know, are we going to keep going up? I'd take a look at some of these levels around 183 and some possible resistance, obviously, before that 188 level because all this price action. Um, but if it is, I keep going back down. Then this next FIB level at the 618 at 148 or 152, <clears throat> I think would be decent levels for dollar cost averaging for, for Amazon. But again, is on the weekly and uh i i just said like a couple minutes ago if something gets under the 50 week moving average it, and stays there technically it's flipping bearish so uh if it is flipping bearish then you can expect more likely you know even further downside to go so right now the candles are still closing on the 50 so it's not bearish yet uh, but if it is going down here 
start to look out, but you know, you may be able to get some of these prices. Uh, since October 23, it's been going up here. Um, and then before that, let's see. Yeah, before that, it's just in this big downtrend that lasted until um, later 2022. So, yeah, uh, we're going to find out real soon where, where a lot of these are going. And it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny to me, you know, because a lot of uh, key economic data is coming out around this time. Things around CPI, PPI, and uh, all that obviously is very important indicators for where these stocks should go. So as of right now... Me, I, I'd be in a holding pattern here. Um, again, a couple of things you can do. Those buy sell signal indicators, stochastic RSI, at least get some confirmation. So let's go to Google. And Google, we don't have a turnaround buy signal yet. Almost got down to the 200, or sorry, the 50 week moving average. It's usually around the 200 day moving average. Yep, that's why I said that. So. Almost got down to the 50 week, and that's why we zoom in because even though it didn't quite get there, when we zoom in on the daily, well, look at that. It came down to the 200 daily, so it is looking a little weak, but maybe it's finding some support here. And overall, you know, if you're a big Google fan, you can say that, um, hey, I'm getting a 16% discount. So not the not the the best levels but not the worst either these would be areas where uh you know if i was a huge fan of google and i am i would seriously consider some dollar cost averaging because you can see on this uptrend since we've been going up and say bullish where have you gotten the deepest value well right at the 200 day moving average and here we are again now of course there's always a chance it could break down sure um but if we don't as we have these last two times this might be the deepest value you get for, you know, look at this happen. When this happened, October 23, March of 24. So sometimes it can be half a year or more until you get these deep value areas, March of 24, all the way to August, you know, so half a year or more in order to get that level of value again. Um, if you like Google, don't ignore it. Meta, Meta is looking the most bullish out of the uh, Mag7 stock so far and after Meta came down, now in the daily, you can see almost got to the 200, not quite. Uh, curious on the weekly. The weekly, you know, what is this showing? I like to see this in a stock that is really strong, and that is it's staying with the 20. Those are the red lines, the 20 week moving average. Anytime it shows weakness, it doesn't get down to on the daily, it doesn't get down to the 200. You know, but it's staying on that 20-week moving average, which is pretty nice. So uh, Meta came down to it, had a few dojis, and now a big weekly buy signal. So I would expect that Meta, if it continues to stay bullish, it might start challenging this 1618 level at around 569, 570. Again, we drew this Fib retracement from the high to the low, and you have to take this off log when you're looking at higher new all-time high price targets. The 1618, and my fib's probably not exact, so plus minus a few uh, around 568. If when it gets to 568, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of a rejection back down to that 20 moving average again. Um, I would assume people would take profits, but if it starts blasting through there, the next target, as crazy as it sounds for, for meta, would be something like 865. I mean, that, that seems crazy for right now, um, but if it is to get above this 568 level it, in a very strong way, that would be what you're looking for next. But uh, yeah, if you were able to get meta down here, you know, not necessarily the worst place to get profits all the way up here. We're talking about a uh, 430 some percent gain inside of two years. It's pretty good, so I would not fault anyone for wanting to take some profits. And then we'll close it out by looking at Tesla. And with Tesla, you can see we are still in this wedge. When I zoomed out, looked at the monthly, I, I talked about this with you guys, how on the monthly it shows we're still inside this wedge, that yes, we wicked above it, but we're still in here. And It's curious how the wedge really tightens around election times and later this year. Um, Q4 tends to be bullish 
Uh, but going into presidential elections tends to bring volatility. So we'll see. But Tesla having a big move down uh, here. And it is settling in nicely around that 0.5. It uh, came back up a little bit. But if the 0.5 and the 200 and uh, those moving average aren't able to hold, the next area to look for would be 173. Now, if we do get a good bounce here, and if Tesla is to possibly get a little bit bullish again, then you'd be looking at that 241 level. Let's zoom in on the daily. And yeah, look at that move. We had like 10 plus green days in a row, and then slowly just chopping down. And here on the daily, man, the daily is kind of showing us even more. Uh, you can see the candle body hit the 50 day, but then the wick there hit that 20 average. It, I'm pretty sure these are like the SMA and EMA there, uh, but the, it wicked right up to that. So it's possible we're having a little bit of rejection here, just as we did here. And yeah, if I had to guess, I would assume it's going down to these 170, 180 levels, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Tomorrow I plan on doing a live stream uh, where we will talk about crypto, Bitcoin mining stocks. The crypto market, as we talked about earlier in this video, is showing some weakness. So we'll talk about uh, some good dollar cost averaging opportunities um, and what to look for, whether the markets are able to uh, flip positive or if they're to stay negative, like what to be prepared for. And again, uh, some indicators that I look at to try to reduce risk and make sure I'm not catching a falling knife, but getting good value. So we will be talking about that in the live stream tomorrow with Bitcoin and a lot of things crypto. So uh, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you are all having a great and wonderful week. Take care.